Our next guest just wrapped up a two-day agriculture tour of his home state of Arkansas. Good to have you here, sir. Hey, great to be with you. Thank you. So, Kayla Tausch, she was on yesterday. She's a reporter who covers trade, interviewed a lot of farmers. Although they are the ones who are going to bear the brunt of a lot of these tariffs, very few of them willing to criticize the president, actually pretty supportive of the methodology here. We've had the head of the Soybean Association on more than once, and he actually supports the president, too. What are you finding when you go across the state, which has a lot of potential agriculture exports that could be affected? Are you, your farmers angry? Are they on board? What are they telling you? I just finished an agricultural tour visiting with farmers all across Arkansas, and there is a lot of patience and recognition that what the president's trying to achieve is the right thing. And so there's a lot of patience there. And you look at what this president has achieved in terms of it looks like we're going to successfully rebalance uh, uh, NAFTA, get a more favorable agreement to the United States. When it comes to the EU, uh, they've reached some mutual goals to reduce tariffs. This is a great success story. When it comes to China, China has uh, agreed to uh, try to rebalance the trade, to buy more agriculture. Uh, they recognize the need to tighten up so they aren't stealing our technology. And so these are great success stories, and our farmers recognize that. We do hope that the president is in a position to declare victory soon. Mm -hmm. Because even though we're very patient uh, and recognize the president is trying to do the right thing, we know that long term there's a significant cost uh, to agriculture, uh, to reinvestment here from foreign uh, countries in the United States. And so we hope that uh, the president can achieve his goals quickly and we can get back to doing business. Do I understand correctly, $339 million worth of agriculture exports could be at risk in a worst case scenario when it comes to Arkansas? Uh, that's right. Uh, we're uh, rice producers. We sell globally our rice, our cotton, so much of our agricultural products. There's over $300 million at risk. But that risk has been reduced because I believe he's diminished the risk with the EU, although we still have to wrap that up. Uh, but right now, our China is one of the greatest uh, risks that we have, both in terms of our export opportunities there, uh, soybeans being one of those, cotton being another one, but uh, also in terms of reshoring manufacturing in the United States. And we have to remember that's one of the objectives of the president is that we'll bring manufacturing back here and we've started down that path but as long as there's trade uncertainty foreign direct investment is going to slow down reshoring the manufacturing is going to slow down uh, businesses do not like uncertainty mm -hmm. and so we do hope that we can get back to a certain future soon hey uh, governor you, you all this trade stuff is going to be viewed in in the uh, prism of the the upcoming midterms uh, as you know, and who knows whether that gives some uh, urgency to, to maybe getting a win here. I don't know uh, for a opponent, but just uh, if you could comment on that. I'm, I'm looking, and I'm not looking at, you know, New York Times here. I'm looking at the Wall Street Journal today on uh, A13, Carl, Carl Rove. Uh, so consider what that's worth. He says the blue wave may be receding. Tuesday's elections show that the GOP has a fighting chance to keep the House. Then you turn the page to the... Uh, the op-ed pages of the Wall Street Journal, and they've never been particularly enthralled with, with uh, the current president, obviously, but they call it the red wave illusion, evidence builds of major GOP losses uh, in November, and they talk about how many governorships could be lost and, and that it really looks bleak for, for holding the House. So who, who's, who do you believe when it's the same paper that, that, that has, you know, blue wave, red wave, which, which is true? And will we know? Well, we won't know till we didn't know. Well, the New York Times was 99% Hillary on, uh, at like 6 o'clock on November 8th or whatever it was. And, you know, within an hour, it was 99% Trump. So how do we ever know? That's why politics make, much, make such great uh, entertainment. Nobody knows until the end of the story, and the voters always control it. To me, it's a lot about, one, the economy, and uh, the economy is performing very well. Will it be performing uh, as strongly in November? And that's a key part of it. The president needs to keep that on track, and I think that he will. Uh, secondly, it's about momentum in terms of the voters and uh, their energy level. And there's some indications that the Democrats are very mobilized, which is traditional in a uh, midterm election. Uh, that's one of the things we've got to do is to make sure the Republicans get out and they recognize the importance of it. Uh, and 
You know, and then when you look at the governor's races, though, and that's what uh, I look at most closely, I think we're in very, very good position to have uh, strong wins and maybe even pick up a couple of seats. So uh, I'm optimistic about November, uh, but it's a story yet to be written. Yeah, the, the journal says the president's persona is trumping the positive policy uh, results. And here's, here's one thing that I would say. You know, when, when we look at Ohio and people say, you know, wow, it's not since Reagan have they had a, a Democrat in that district. Most midterms, you should assume that they're going to be much tighter than with the, when the incumbent is one party, the midterms almost always show a flip to, to the other party. So I, I would assume all these races that, that heretofore would not have been so close, they're, they're going to start close, much closer. So still pulling out a win there and, and what's going on. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, how you necessarily look at it. But, but if, you know, to seize on the notion that because these, these normally not close races are close, I mean, usually you lose 30, 40 seats. Just uh, you start out losing 30 or 40. The incumbent president party does, don't they? Uh, absolutely. We're fighting uh, against the uh, tide, of, tide of history because historically we lose seats in the uh, midterm elections. Uh, and so we'll see on that point. You know, you mentioned uh, the static that comes uh, out of the White House. There are a lot of distractions. No, the but, journal mentioned it. Uh, uh, yes. Right. <laughs> uh, well, a very good point, good distinction. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I talk to our voters here. They really recognize what substantively is being accomplished. And so uh, here in Arkansas, I think uh, in, in mid-America, there's strong support for the president. I believe that will continue into November. Uh, we just got to make sure that uh, uh, we run elections. We're supposed to uh, be effective in it, getting out the vote efforts, not taking anything for granted. Uh, but uh, there is a focus on the difference that this president has made in deregulation uh, in terms of of renegotiating uh, the uh, trade imbalances across the globe uh, in terms of our Supreme Court uh, nominees. All of these are big success stories that resonate in Arkansas Governor? and and across the mid-America. If yes. I go, uh, one, one final question. I want to go back to trade and, and talk about NAFTA. Um, agriculture exports, big for Arkansas. In Mexico, if anyone complains about NAFTA, it's farmers and agriculture. They feel that NAFTA, they feel it's very misunderstood that while NAFTA helped the auto industry in Mexico dramatically, it devastated Mexican agriculture because U.S. agriculture is just so much more productive and was able to undercut them. Um, what do you think about NAFTA in terms of its importance for the United States and what it would do for your state if we finally got a deal done there? Well, it's essential. And uh, it's been a long time since NAFTA was uh, entered into as an agreement uh, with all of the modern technologies that we have. Uh, we need to take another look at it. We need to modernize it. That's what the president is doing. Uh, but the North American trade is critical, critical to the United States. And while we lost manufacturing jobs after NAFTA was entered into, we've readjusted our economy and now if you don't have that North American trade, then we lose jobs again. It's like a double hit. And so uh, we right now are exporting not just agriculture, but we also have an interchange in the automobile and the aero defense industry mm -hmm. back and forth with Mexico. Manufacturing jobs depend upon that. And so uh, we want that uh, North American to continue, okay. not just with Mexico, but with Canada also very critical for us. Thanks for getting up early in Little Rock for us, Governor. We appreciate it.